Sometimes the story found in Magic the Gathering can get a bit confusing, and even with the written content, more is needed to fully grasp what the heck is going on in the lore. Such was the case with Magic's latest visit to the plane of Ravnica. In a set all about mystery and sleuthing, there was one question we never got an answer to. Where is Niv-Mizzet? Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Ether Hub. I'm Sidebin, bringing you more Magic the Gathering lore. Today, I want to bring a little clarity, as well as answer a question that's been burning for me recently in the Magic the Gathering story. The very apparent absent of Ravnica's new Living Guild Pact, the parent of the plane, Niv Mizzet. As its supreme leader and the arbiter between the guilds, it's Niv Mizzet's job as Living Guild Pact to ensure safety and stability on Ravnica, as well as balance and delegate powers between the guilds themselves. Then why, during all the literal backstabbing going on, was Niv-Mizzet nowhere to be found? He wasn't even mentioned throughout the entire story of murders at Karlov Manor. So in this video, I want to run down the history of Niv-Mizzet as Ravnica's Living Gill Pact, as well as the epilogue story we got explaining his absence during murders at Karlov Manor, which also includes a glimpse of his plans for the future and how the dragon will be involved with that future in Magic's continuing Omen Path arc. So let's answer the question, where the heck was Niv-Mizzet? But before we begin, a quick shout out to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored again by the wonderful people over at OMA, the original Magic Artwork store. They have a brand new playmat collection available right now over on their Kickstarter page, this time celebrating the artwork of one of MTG's most prominent artists, the amazing Magali Villeneuve. Everyone who plays Magic the Gathering has seen and admired Megali's work on their favorite cards, and now, through this Kickstarter project, OMA is bringing those cards' beautiful art to playmats you can play on. You'll find cards such as Liliana, Waker of the Dead, Narset, Potter of Veils, and Huntmaster of the Fells from its newest printing, all getting fresh playmats only available through this Kickstarter project. You can go to their Kickstarter, linked in the video description, to see a full rundown of available playmats as well as high quality Giggly prints with extended art. They have bundles that give you more options at discounted prices, with stretch goals unlocking even more art by Megali to add to this playmat collection. In fact, right now, because of our community's backing, the project has already unlocked this stunning Dominaria United stained glass art that you can buy as a playmat. You know those gorgeous full art lands with a stained glass aesthetic from Dominaria United? Yeah, they've brought all of them together into one beautiful playmat, which is my personal favorite of the collection. I just really love those lands. These will be limited run prints, whose art will never again be used on Stitch playmats. That means this could be your only chance to get your favorite Magali art as a playmat to really up game nights at your LGS. To make these playmats even more unique is that each will be marked with a special signature stamp designed by Megali herself, denoting their exclusivity. OMA has been a sponsor of our content before, and that's because they've consistently brought our community some of the highest quality playmats around, featuring Magic's most influential artists who make the multiverse of this game come to life. You really can't go wrong here, if you're looking for a new, elegant playmat featuring some of the best art from one of the game's most talented artists, then you really need to check out the Megali Villeneuve Playmat Collection over on Kickstarter, support the project, and get your hands on these limited playmats today. Again, the link to check them all out can be found in the video description below, and I cannot recommend them enough. Now, let's get back to the lore. To start this video, it's a good idea we backtrack a little bit and lay out just how important the Living Guild Pact is on the plane of Ravnica, and why his absence during the murders at Karlov Manor was so surprising. The Living Guild Pact is not just a title, some meaningless thing that grants only a perceived sense of status and power on Ravnica, but it's in fact a magically charged state, one that raises an individual to an impossibly prominent position on the plane. 
Long before order between the guilds was ever established, Ravnica was a wild place where chaos reigned. The planeswalking sphinx, Azor, who prides himself on establishing perfect structures of law and order on worlds, introduced the original guild pact to Ravnica which saw the designation of the 10 official guilds we know today. Back then, this guild pact was a physical document, signed by the ten Perons or founders of the guilds, including Niv-Mizzet, the founder of the Izzet League. Azor manipulated the mana ley lines of Ravnica in such a way that it funneled all of its magical potential into the guild pact's words, making them unbreakable laws, so that what was written in the guild pact literally became reality on Ravnica. This established a great balance between the guilds and greatly reduced chaos, as the city prospered and grew. Yet, like with all contracts, there are always loopholes that could be exploited. As we saw, one of the rules of the Guild Pact were eventually circumvented and the entire document became null and void, breaking its magical hold and descending Ravnica into chaos and war between the guilds. For the plane to survive its own violent nature, the power of the Guild Pact must continue on, and it would do so through the being known as the Living Guild Pact. Because of its importance in maintaining order, Niv-Mizzet recognized that the Guild Pact had to return, but not encoded in some flawed, unchanging document, rather in a being who can think, delegate, and evolve as new situations occur on Ravnica. They needed someone that could adapt to new threats that would eventually come for their plane, including those from outside of their reality. Thus, the first living Guild Pact would rise, this being the Mind Mage and Planeswalker Jace Beleren. Niv-Mizzet had discovered the mana ley lines that had once fueled the Guild Pact as they traced through the hollowed guild halls of Ravnica. Finding the place where they all intersect, a proven champion would be the conduit of all of Ravnica's mana, granting them the powers of the Guild Pact. This person would be Jace, who in ascending now had the ability to create new laws, force guilds to obey commands, and maintain the plane's balance. The Living Guild Pact is important because not only do they prevent all-out war on Ravnica and establish order, but they can also meet new challenges and set precedents that the original Guild Pact could have never been prepared for. The only variance is the one with the power, and Jace Beleren made for a pretty lousy Living Guild Pact. Being a planeswalker, Jace would regularly disappear from Ravnica for long spans of time, leaving the plane without its protector or the laws he concretely enforced. Every time Jace planeswalked, a new disaster could, and often did, occur on Ravnica. The dragon Niv-Mizzet, with his vast intellect, realized this to be a problem. Not because he cared for the squabbling between the guilds, or even holding ultimate power himself. Though he wasn't necessarily dismayed by that either. But in truth, as a non-planeswalker and no ability to leave Ravnica, Niv-Mizzet wanted to ensure that his home world would be protected from any threat. And with his discovery of different planes and visitors from other worlds, the threats Ravnica now faced became unpredictable to Niv-Mizzet, leaving the dragon feeling uncertain for the first time in his long life. So how then did Niv-Mizzet become the Living Guild Pact? Niv-Mizzet's journey as the Living Guild Pact started with the discovery of a far-off threat that had eyes for Ravnica. This was the Elder Dragon Planeswalker Nicol Bolas who looked to make Ravnica a casualty in his grand scheme to become a god. Seeing this inevitable calamity, Niv-Mizzet, along with Izzet scientists, began working on a secret project called the Interlocus. Its primary goal? To give himself the powers of the Living Guild Pact in order to better protect Ravnica, as Niv-Mizzet believed the fragile and wayward Jace Beleren couldn't be trusted in this. As he toiled with these experiments, Bolas too recognized the threat Niv-Mizzet posed to his plans on Ravnica. After attempting to assassinate the Izzet guild leader, Bolas instead opted to use Niv-Mizzet's genius to his benefit. He supplanted a great idea into the Perun's head to convert the Lightning Bug Project, a beacon that tracked the comings and goings of planeswalkers on Ravnica, into a device that coaxed planeswalkers from all across the multiverse to the plane. While Niv-Mizzet believed these interplanar beings could help fight against Bolas, it was engineered by the God Dragon as a means of ensuring that Ravnica stored plenty of sparks he would use in his ascension ritual. Though Bolas is unfathomably intelligent and cunning with thousands of years of prep time dedicated to Ravnica's invasion, Niv-Mizzet rivaled his opponent's ability to plan. 
even as the War of the Spark was about to begin, and the Izzet's secret project to grant Niv-Mizzet the powers of the Living Guild Pact was sabotaged by Bolas' minions, the Guardian of Ravnica wouldn't be denied victory, even at the precipice of death. Niv-Mizzet offered his compliments to Bolas as the Elder Dragon finally arrived on Ravnica. Niv-Mizzet admitted that, without the power of the Guild Pact, he would surely be defeated by Bolas but hoped in confronting the invader, he would delay his efforts enough for his contingency plan to begin. As Dragon fought Dragon, Bolas was genuinely impressed with how Niv-Mizzet held up against his attacks. Bolas is known as the most devastating telepath in the multiverse, but even his mind-crushing mental magic couldn't penetrate the mind barrier set up by Ravnica's guardian. The two gigantic dragons fought with claws, wings, teeth, and magic. A struggle never before seen on Ravnica. The clash was destructive and costly, tearing down a huge part of the city. But even a collapsing block wasn't enough to hurt Bolas, merely drawing blood from the Elder Dragon. Niv-Mizzet felt his impending death long before it came for him, having the foresight to know when he was outmatched. But fear didn't suit the Great Fire Mind, as he charged his adversary only to meet a bolt of death magic which left nothing but charred bones behind. Niv-Mizzet had fallen after this short but intense battle, yet it was enough, and the greatest mind on Ravnica had always prepared for this exact event to happen. With Bolas' perceived victory, the God Dragon felt there was nothing left on Ravnica to fear, just as Niv-Mizzet intended. This secret project was dubbed Operation Desperation, and required not only the aid of all ten Ravnican guilds, but the genius minds of Ralzarek and Ugin the Spirit Dragon. After his death, Niv-Mizzet's soul was captured in a device and transported off-plane for safety, while others worked to resurrect the dragon and make him the new Living Guild Pact. The heroes of Ravnica, amidst the chaos of war, had to combine Niv-Mizzet's charred remains, the vessel containing his soul, and the intersecting mana ley lines of Ravnica in order to defeat Bolas. Niv-Mizzet's faith in the mortal defenders of Ravnica paid off, as a ritual led by Nyssa Ravain and in coordination with each of the ten guilds saw the mana of Ravnica flow through all of them, which powered the device that came about his rebirth. His smoldering bones glowed a shimmering gold, the vessel storing his spirit whirled with anticipation, in a conflux of colorful mana swirling around him as if wielded by his clawed fingers, Niv-Mizzet was reborn as the new Living Guild Pact of Ravnica. His first official act as Living Guild Pact was to kill one of the zombified gods Bolas had brought to subjugate his world. The immense power of Ravnica poured through him as fire utterly vaporized the eternalized god, Kefnet. With that, Niv-Mizzet turned his attentions to the dragon who defeated him once, Bolas himself. Even now, supercharged with Ravnica's mana, Bolas would be a nearly impossible opponent, as he too had ascended to near godhood. Still, with the aid of other heroes, including Liliana Vess, Niv-Mizzet Supreme managed to stab Bolas in the back with a spear, mortally wounding the god dragon. The War of the Spark had ended, and in their victory, Niv-Mizzet cemented himself as the Living Guild Pact and ultimate guardian of Ravnica. He cast aside his previous position as Paran of the Izzet League, choosing to remain unbiased and fair between the guilds, who are now under his protection. He would use this power moving forward to ensure the stability of Ravnica, and shield it from the countless threats of the multiverse. But if this was the pledge Niv-Mizzet took after his resurrection and becoming the Living Guild Pact, where was he during the events of Murders at Karlov Manor? As the sworn protector of Ravnica, Niv-Mizzet, going by the titles Supreme, Guild Pact, Firemind, Paran, and or Draco Genius, if you haven't guessed, he's a bit vain and egotistical, well, he was in charge of ensuring peace between the guilds, but also using his vast knowledge and information gathered throughout the multiverse via planeswalking visitors to calculate possible threats to Ravnica, which he soon discovered included the coming storm that was New Phyrexia. Ravnica stood as a particularly challenging plane to complete, as Elish Norn was well aware of the Living Guild Pact's immense power, so the Praetor had to send the completed planeswalker Vraska to lead its invasion. Even with this monstrous champion, Niv-Mizzet was able to coordinate a defense with the Ravnican guilds, and even use his own insane magical energy in defense of the plane, delaying the invasion enough until New Phyrexia fell to other heroes of the multiverse. 
In the wake of their invasion, Niv-Mizzet's potent mind recognized a disturbance in the fabric of the multiverse. This was known as the Great Pruning. Because of Elish Norn's use of the invasion tree, which ripped through the blind eternities, the multiverse had become unstable, and the same portals they had used to invade other worlds were beginning to pop up not only on Ravnica, but on every plane. These were gateways that allowed any being to travel the blind eternities. They were omen paths. Niv-Mizzet began to investigate these phenomenons in earnest, and soon saw them not only as potential harbingers of disaster to Ravnica, but as potent portals of prosperity as well. In meeting several visitors from the Plain of Coldheim, either those from Omen Paths or other Planeswalkers, Niv-Mizzet learned that these were called Omen Paths, and began working on a new project, which he dubbed the Omen Path Project. He set to work researching them, understanding them, seeing a pattern other lesser minds could not, save for one other, the man who would confront the Living Guild Pact on his absence during recent disturbances between the guilds, the master detective, Alquis Proft. In an audience gained with niv -Mizzet, Proft lays out what he had learned while investigating the curious murders taking place across Ravnica, while uncovering the culprit, the guild leader of Selesnia, Trostani, there was a bigger question on Prof's mind. Where was their guardian? The one who looked to quell any issues between the guilds? Certainly the machinations of Trostani didn't escape his watchful eyes. Surely her use of Vitugazi's roots and Ravnica's mana didn't fail to catch his attention? Prof brings this to the feet of the massive dragon, knowing he may be forfeiting his own life, but he's a slave to uncovering the truth of all things. Niv-Mizzet admits that he was aware of Trastani's transgressions, but chose not to intervene as he was busying himself with more important matters, bigger threats to Ravnica. The dragon surprised when Proft asks if this more important matter involves the Omen Path Project, something Niv-Mizzet believed remained a secret up until now. Yes, Proft had deduced a great deal about this Omen Path Project, how Niv-Mizzet employed members of all ten guilds sworn to secrecy to investigate and study these portals to different worlds. How he saw that their occurrence weren't random, but a pattern. One that he looked to manipulate or control outright. He found all this out through his informant, Kylox, who was working on experiments with Omen Paths since the Phyrexians arrived. He was aiding Niv-Mizzet in the Omen Path project before he was killed by Trostani, but in his death, Proft was able to decode the scientists' encrypted work and traced it back to the Living Gill Pact. Niv-Mizzet admits that he had employed Kylox and others, and that the Omen Path Project was simply an extension of his responsibility as Guardian of Ravnica. They could be used to smuggle in off-plane goods, ruin the Ravnican economy, and exploit gaps in the plane's security. Proft wasn't satisfied with this answer, though. The dragon looked to do more. He accuses Niv-Mizzet of wanting to control the Omen Paths, manipulate them, and hold them open permanently, essentially making Ravnica the central hub of the multiverse, with portals connecting it to countless worlds. With proper mapping, Niv-Mizzet would make Ravnica the center of this newly connected multiverse, ushering in a new age with their world being as its glorious mecha. Niv-Mizzet does nothing but simply affirm, yes, this was his plan. And hearing this, Master Detective Proft offers his humble services. Certainly, his deductive capabilities could be put to use on such a grand project. The Living Guild Pact agrees, with nothing left to discuss besides payment. So where was Niv-Mizzet, the Living Guild Pact, during the events of Murders at Karloff Manor? We all thought it was a bit strange that the literal Guardian of Ravnica, the Arbiter of Order between the Guilds, didn't show up at all during a literal confrontation between the Guilds that resulted in prominent deaths. But now we know. He was in fact busy working on something more important, realizing what was happening between the Guilds and choosing to instead focus on the Omen Path Project. With us now fully in the Omen Path arc for Magic the Gathering story, Niv-Mizzet's plans to make Ravnica the central hub of the multiverse, with all these connecting portals, leads us to plenty more questions. Why would the protector of Ravnica open the plane up to so many diverse threats? What would having a completely connected world do for this story? For the longest time in MTG lore, it was believed that Dominaria was basically considered the center of the multiverse, 
It's a huge plane that's very well fleshed out with a ton of history and stories taking place on it. And almost all known planeswalkers have visited there and referred to it as the center of the multiverse. But now Niv-Mizzet looks to take that title for Ravnica and at the same time make himself one of the most powerful beings in the multiverse. In making Ravnica a central station for interplanar travel, he would have the ability to shut down omen paths and any policy relating to them, making niv mizzet incredibly important in what will surely be a brand new multiverse in Magic the Gathering. And there you guys go, the answer to the burning question, where was niv mizzet during murders at Karlov Manor? Let me know your thoughts with where his plans are heading in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave it a like, share it with friends, and consider becoming a subscriber to the channel. It all goes a long way in helping our community grow. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time guys, see ya!